Aber es ist auch anders hier zu sagen, du bist eine der wichtigsten wichtigsten Organisationen hier in Lakewood, Azula. Ich muss nicht erklären, was sie für alle tun. Ich hoffe, dass wir ein bisschen was tun können. Und einige von uns sind hier, einer von den größten Administratoren in Lakewood. Er wird uns zeigen, was auf einem täglichen Basis passiert, was in Azula passiert. Sie sind jetzt gerade in einer Auktion und sie haben sich ein bisschen behindert, sie haben sich ein bisschen behindert, sie haben sich ein bisschen behindert. Und ich muss dachten, wir haben so viel Geld, um keine Tisch stellen, um zu sagen, alles ist in der Tafel mit sich. Mati, wanna first show us the inside yeah, what's sure. going on? So let me start off with the supply room. The supply room is where we keep all of our supplies to stack our ambulances and our uh, and our um, BLS equipment. So you have we have one of our dedicated service members, Eliezer Kaufman, service twenty two. He's one of uh, our service wow. members. We have What's going on inside in the small pack. Always see them running with this. Unbelievable. We have 25. We have 20. You always see them running with it. You don't know what it's inside. You don't exactly. know what it takes to make it. But a lot of work goes into it. Stacking up the members' bags, stacking up ambulances, and making sure we have what it takes to treat a patient. Um, you told me before you need some EpiPens. EpiPens. Right? The EpiPens expire. EpiPens are one of the expensive things we have, um, which expires pretty quickly. Um, there's no Narcan either. So EpiPens and Narcan. Narcan is also expensive and something else that we, that we, uh, that every member has that in the bag. Um, here we have, here we have all our um, BLS equipment, our trauma stuff, bandages, gauze pads, um, splints, collars, um, our oxygen masks, different sizes, Albuterol masks, nebulizer masks. Um, we have a, they carry albuterol as well, and stethoscopes, blood pressure cuffs. This is everything a member needs to carry in his bag in order to treat a patient. Gewaldic! Wow. Friar, let me show you. This is our uh, dispatch room, our main dispatch room. However, we do not use this on a daily basis. The dispatchers dispatch from the comfort of their own home. Um, we have one dispatcher on at a time for every two hours, but we have multiple dispatches available if need be. So uh, when are you using if, this room? If there is a snowstorm or some kind of a uh, big event, we'll usually have two dispatches in this room. We also have in our James Street garage, we also have a huge dispatch room where there may be... How many garages do you have all together? We have four garages and we have, um, we're building another three now, and we have uh, ambulances and paramedic vehicles parked all around town. Jackson, Towns River as well. Um, this is our dispatch system. When the call comes in, it shows up on the screen. The dispatcher gets maps, puts members that are responding on the system, and they get a text message of exactly where the call is. Let me take you outside to the vehicles. These vehicles are used daily, multiple times a day, as, these, as this uh, building, this garage is one of our most frequent used garage. So we have our we have our most advanced most advanced ambulance. This is the state of the art, um, three hundred and fifty thousand dollar ambulance. Um, what makes it so expensive? We are more than just here to treat a patient. We want the patient to be comfortable. We want the members to be comfortable and safe. Um, if you take a look at the stretcher system, the stretcher system we have is a is a fifty thousand dollar stretcher system. Again, it's for the patient's comfort. And safety as well as the members comfort and safety um, if you take a look as soon as you open the door the vehicle lowers down and the stretcher is fully uh, electric operational as one person and comes out with a full track. wow so I this stretcher can hold up to 700 pounds easily and be and be operated by one person. Wow, it's unbelievable. And they don't have to lift anything, so it makes it safer for them. They don't break their backs. And I can have a 700 pounder right here, right now, without holding up. Okay, um, when was this truck built? What year? This truck, I believe, was built in 2021. Wow. Um, we have a couple of other trucks. We have about four trucks on order. They're all donated. Um, it takes about approximately between 18 months and two years to put a truck on the road. Gewaldic. This is one of our uh, seven paramedic trucks we have. This, is, this has more paramedic equipment than this. So if there's a call that needs uh, paramedics, 
this truck will respond as well. This is the inside, let me then. Um, in this truck, we have uh, close to $100,000 worth of equipment. We have a thumper. A thumper is a device that we use on a uh, CPR call. This thumper does compressions instead of the members having to do it. Um, so we can, well, if we have to transport a patient while we're doing compressions, we can have the machine hooked up and the machine does the compressions. We have this, this is a, which people probably heard a lot about, this is called a life pack. This life pack is, is, is like a defibrillator, but it does much more than that. This can restore regular heart rhythm. Um, this does EKG, pictures of the heart, and does multiple other things. This monitor is about thirty-five dollars to $40,000 a piece, and each of our 30 paramedics have them, as well as our trucks. There are a bunch of medication in here, and narcotics in here as well. Um, we have seven of these trucks, and these are uh, 2021, 2022 trucks. What's the alter truck? This truck over here is our extrication vehicle. Hatala of Central Jersey is one of the only Hatsalas in the world that does our own extrication, usually it's the fire department. Uh, we have a team of members who are regular members as well who train the vehicle extrication. Um, this has three sets of extrication equipment, so we can either work on one car quickly, or we can, or we can, uh, to cut up one car quickly, we can cut up two, three cars at the same time. Wow. Um, this is John. Here you go. All right, I'm scanning a little plate, so let's just finish with the oxygen room, and then a little later we can show a little more. This is the oxygen room. This is, these are the small tanks that the, that the members carry in their bags, and these are the big tanks that are on the ambulances. These get, uh, these get filled uh, probably on a weekly basis. Uh, members come here to refill, to get their new tanks, put their old ones in, and they get switched out. The service members, part of their responsibility is if uh, uh, ambulance oxygen gets low, they bring the ambulance over here and they switch their big tanks. Gewaldig. Fine. Schoeurig. I guess we're going to have It's getting late. And the uh, to wissen. It's very important for Tula. Anybody that wants to donate or, to, or to be part of the Chinese auction, I'll post a link, the booklet, and the big mitzvah to be part of it. Okay, let me move.